Well, this week I thought it would be fun to show you guys this um, homemade thickness sander I uh, put together, I think, a little over a year ago, maybe two years ago. Um, but if you don't know what a thickness sander is, they sometimes call it a drum sander as well. And it's kind of like a planer for really uh, fine scale stuff. If you have a, a thin piece of wood you're trying to thickness down, like a guitar top, or you just want a cabinet door to have a nice sanded surface rather than planer, like mild planer marks you'd want to use a thickness sander for that. There's also some cool things you can do with the profile of the drum, but um, basically you can see it's just, I've got some cabinets on the bottom with some 2x4 framing. Um, there's a table, <laughs> there's a little table there. Uh, it's pretty thick um, and that moves up and down with that little um, screw in lever deal. And then inside here there's a drum and you pass wood through it. Um, and, uh, and that's how you do the thicknessing sanding. So I'll go ahead and pull the top off and show you how things look. So here it is with the top off and I figured I'd do like a little walk around and explain the construction as I go. I built it a couple of years back like I said so uh, you know sorry there's no build video. But it's pretty simple construction. I used um, basically uh, the idea is you have these pillow block bearings they call them and they're about eight or nine bucks on um, Amazon. That's, uh, the opening on these ones is one inch and I bought one inch shafting so it's like a metal bar but it's really uh, high precision uh, very true and I think that was about eh, maybe 15 or 20 I'll link it in the description again though um, so you end up getting you know a length that's long enough for what you need I tried to make my um, drum about 16 inches and so I needed that plus you know like 8 inches or so for the pillow block support and all that jazz um, and then um, whatever motor you use and this is a table saw motor and it's uh, I think it's kind of like a kind of a high-speed one for some reason it's 3450 rpm so I had to notch things down I think you want the drum spinning at like 1100 rpm if I remember right I'll link it in the description if I uh, misspoke there uh, but basically you can use pulley calculators to figure out if you have a hey a six inch drum um, and uh, you know what speed that would be spinning at um, you know based on your pulleys and your shafting right? Sorry for the bird. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I needed kind of a big pulley. If you had a 1750 RPM motor, you could get away with a smaller pulley. Not a big deal though, I just covered it with that little thing you saw over there. Um, as far as how you make this drum, it's not too bad. I used 3 quarter inch MDF and I basically cut out a bunch of little circles on a table saw. You, um, I don't know if you've ever seen a table saw circle jig that you can make at home, but you take a board and you basically draw a little or drive a little nail into it something like this you know would work if it, as long as you clamp it and you put a finish nail in there and you basically um, trim it so it's at the distance from the blade for the radius of your circle I did mine so that my circle would come out to about six and a, six inches with like a sixteenth over just because I'm going to end up sanding it and then you clamp that down uh, you drill a hole through the center of your little squares I cut out a bunch of six, uh, of squares that were like six inches by or a little over six inches by six inches and then you know put it on the finish nail spun it around to cut them circles into perfect circles after that that little hole I had for the finish nail I used a Forstner bit on my drill press to drill that out to one inch and then I basically um, I kinda they were a pretty tight fit um, so I kinda had to tap them on with the mallet and sandwiched them all together with glue so I'd put a little glue on the side slide it all on down another and just go until I got enough to go across then I used a couple of uh, really long bar clamps actually I think four of them to clamp the clamp a ton of pressure on it and really um, cause the you know to get a really good uh, grip between them um, and then uh, after that you have all this horrible mess of glue dry glue and they're not true looking uh, but don't worry what you end up doing is after you get everything set up and built you'll take an MDF board um, that's nice and flat glue a bunch of sandpaper that's kind of heavy grit to it and while this is spinning you slide it under there kind of work it back and forth and it'll true itself perfectly coplanar with your bed and as you can see I'm going to flick it on it's just spinning nice and true that's two years of use on this thing too and as, um, as it kind of wears, you can go in there and sand it again, take off the belt and sand it, um, and retrue it if you, you know, in this uh, surface that I have right here uh, for the, the table, it's actually two uh, thicknesses of MDF. And then on top of that, I've got um, this uh, quarter inch hardboard with the white surface, it's really slick. That's, that part, I only 
I didn't glue down, I actually used spray adhesive so I could pull that up as this gets marred and replace it and then again sand the bed or sand the drum. As far as how do you get the uh, sandpaper to stay on, I just notched out um, in the end here. Some people just use hook and loop sandpaper and then put the, the Velcro end on this. That's one way to do it. I kind of wanted it to be, I didn't want any give in the belt. Some people say it doesn't matter, but it, just for me, I wanted to make sure I could control the thickness of my sanding very, very accurately. So I notched this out and put a little block in there that I created um, so that when I screw this down tight, the, the head of the screw is underneath the level of sandpaper. Then you just stick a little corner in there, um, tighten her down, and those things naturally kind of pull the, the uh, sandpaper down tight as you screw them in. You wrap it all the way around, get to the other end, do the same thing over there, and you're good to go. I think I even sprayed a little adhesive, sprayed adhesive on the back of the belt that you don't need to do, but figured it would help. And you get you get a little drift, you know, it was perfectly flush at first and then it, it gets a little drift, but it doesn't really matter. It's not a big deal. As long as it's not floppy, um, you're good. It's not going to catch or, or fly off or anything. Um, and then carriage bolts, like huge carriage bolts with uh, nuts on them through the pillow blocks just to hold them in the 2x4s. Um, the, the way the, uh, the uh, little motor here is mounted, again this is an old table saw, three quarter horsepower motor. It's just on some hinges on a piece of board. Uh, makes it easy as far as finding, um, getting good belt tension, but not too much. If you want even less vibration, you can mount it to the top if you make a cabinet like I did. Um, and then just, you know, make it so it can slide to pull belt tension. And that'll probably be even less vibration. Um, it's, the wiring's pretty simple, you know, just couple leads out of the motor go into the switch and then a couple leads from your plug go into the other end of the switch um, you could probably look that up pretty easy so simple and then I grounded the box uh, to the motor and then out to the plug and all that um, it's two by four construction you can see just two verticals and a simple um, beam going across bunch of screws uh, same thing on the other side this cross beam here um, is just so I can uh, add a little support and then put that piece of all thread up through into the bottom. It doesn't screw into the bottom, it just pushes against it. So when you turn it, it controls the, uh, um, you know, the elevation of the bed, it tilts. The back is sort of like a hinge. I actually have a piece of all thread going this way and a notch in the underside of the table. So it just rests on that. Some people just use like door hinges at the back there too. Um, and then, you know, on the back, um, you know, you don't have to. I just put a piece of MDF because I had some left and uh, screwed it in, glued it, just to get create some extra rigidity there. And the cabinet helps with the rigidity too and gives me some storage space. I bought the sandpaper on uh, Amazon as well and haven't used a ton of it. This is the 150 grit, got some 80 grit as well that I usually use that. The 80 grit um, sands a lot uh, more aggressively and this, this is just for some fine finishing or if you're really doing something um, that you're trying to get it just the right few thousandths of an inch like a guitar top or something like that um, but yeah pretty straightforward as far as that goes I will put um, uh, links in the description also to some build uh, websites that show a little more detail of how that works but I'll go ahead and put everything back together and I'll show you me using it show you how it all you know when you're sanding a piece of wood how things um, how things work how simple it is to use um, and uh, pretty fun stuff Okay, so I got myself all set up, put the hood back on, and I have it so it notches down. Um, I designed it so it notches down pretty close that um, if, if this is engaging the wheel, you can see there's just a little clearance on either side to allow some airflow through. Um, and so that's kind of nice, and that really does, <laughs> sorry, the bird, no good. That really does help it to uh, collect really well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use this board. I wish I had one that was a little rougher. But you can probably see on the board that there are some planer marks on this board. It's not bad at all, um, but this will chew it up really nice. And basically you, you screw it up and the, 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 the base up until it starts to engage a little bit. You don't want it necessarily super tight. Um, but then you just uh, go ahead and flick on your shop back and the thing can go to town. I'm going to do that now. It's going to get pretty loud, unfortunately. <laughs>
this does do a decent job of um, keeping the dust down. Um, and you could probably also see on the board, I wouldn't hurt to do one more pass, but check that out. You really get all the, um, the markings out and get this super nice finish that's dead level or dang close. Um, and really cool to be able to do that without spending uh, two billion dollars <laughs> on, on some great, uh, I mean they're great, they are good, thickness standards, but um, if you're just a, a hobby DIYer like me, um, that's a sure a lot better option. I'll take a few more passes and show you the final result. So I took uh, two more passes and you can see it's uh, just nice and smooth. Um, there's no marks on it now. Uh, really nice uh, feel to it. Um, that's, I think that's 150 grit. If I started with 80 you can take out the uh, bigger marks and then uh, go down to the finer stuff. A lot of times 80 is fine though. And this is, I just thought I'd show you, I took the hood off. And that's all I have for dust hanging out on the bed. So that's dang good considering that was multiple passes and that would have been plumes of sand uh, or of dust everywhere if I hadn't um, had some kind of dust collection going. This whole bed in the back would have been full because um, this thing takes off a whole lot more than you know even a power sander would um, when you're going at it by hand. So pretty cool stuff. Um, I'm really pleased with you know obviously. Um, the, you know, the other ones are like automatic feed. This one, it's important that you feed everything at a consistent speed. If you don't, you'll have differences, you know, very, very minor, but little differences um, in thickness, and you can kind of see it too. Um, so you got to be a little careful just to get a good uh, rhythm going. And I have some push sticks too that I'll use for boards to kind of push it all the way through. You do want to be careful because the it's spinning this direction so that if you were to let go it's going to launch it back at you. So you just want to make sure you don't let go, especially when you're pulling it out the back. Otherwise uh, you're going to have some fun in your garage there <laughs> and possibly hurt you or other people. Uh, but it's really not bad to control at all when you're, when you're standing by it. Uh, it doesn't take that much effort. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, of course, um, send them my way. I'll put the uh, links in the description. There's also a little um, a build link that I'll, uh, I'll put in there as well of uh, kind of how I, I, I based mine off of a few other designs and tweak some things. But um, overall, it's a pretty simple premise. And uh, that link in this video ought to get you off to the races with it. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, good luck with your uh, thickness sander build if you go for it.